Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing, how to generate passive income from a diversified portfolio of high-yield funds. And in this video, we're going to take a look at my top favorite or recommended cash parking funds where you can get at least 6% yield plus. So things like, um, you know, cash savings account, which are giving five, maybe some are giving six. Uh, are, are not going to be included in this fund because when rates get cut, those are going to go way down. So a key word here, you got to have at least, the fund has to have at least 6% plus yield and obviously uh, got to have some you know steady income, lower volatility, less risk than other things, right? So this is going to be a video that I'm planning to do every year at the beginning of every year, just like the hold forever uh, high yield Canadian cover call ETFs and hold forever uh, U.S. high yield cover call ETFs. And what I'm planning to do is every single year is review the ETF, see if there's any new ones to add to the list. So every year you have, you know, the ones that I feel are hold forever, which are basically, uh, you know, diversified or, or ETFs you could hold forever to make up a core position in your portfolio, which I explained in those videos. And by the way, I'll put the links in the video description below if you, in case you haven't seen them. But I'm also going to do one for cash parking. And I'm going to cover both the Canadian market and the U.S. market in this video. So let's get to it right away. We'll start with the Canadian market. If you're an American investor, don't invest in the Canadian market. Just skip to the American part using the YouTube chapters. But basically, my the premise behind this video is I'm going to give you some options where I feel are great places to park your money, either for an emergency fund, either for a very, very short term. Let's say you're saving for a down payment. You need, you're going to need the money in six months, a year. I'm going to give you a few options with different risk levels, some with really low, low, low risk, some a little bit higher. But all of them, in my opinion, are lower risk, low volatility options where you could get at least 6% plus yield. Many great options. Let's check them out right now. All right, everyone, starting with the Canadian market, we're going to take a look at quite a few options here, about six or seven, and it's really three categories, I would say. So let's start off with the least risky, the most boring, the one that's probably going to be the safest uh, in terms of capital, but you know, still 6% plus yield. It's, of course, SPLT the ETF from Brompton, the split corporation preferred share ETF. So this is a really, really unique and cool idea where it's an ETF, SPLT is an ETF listed on the Canadian market. And what it is, it's basically an index ETF that captures all the preferred shares of all the split share funds in Canada. So remember, the, the preferred shares of a split fund, it's very, very, very boring and low risk. You're basically not capturing any movement of the stock prices. So yes, you can pick and choose your individual split fund preferred shares, like you could get FTN.PR, right? Or DFN.PR, DGS.PR, et cetera. But this is even kind of like an all-in-one solution where you basically have all of them and you could see the, the breakdown here. And this is uh, market cap weighted. So the bigger the split fund, the bigger the percentage, and of course, dividend 15 and D, or, or DFN and a dividend growth split fund from Brompton, which is DGS, are the two biggest split funds. FTN and FFN are also big. LBS is also big. That's why it makes up the majority here. So you have all kinds of different preferred share uh, split funds here all put together. And, uh, you know, this is very interesting and very unique concept because they reset typically every five years and sometimes they're trading at a discount. So Brompton is managing all of that for you to so basically you also have some capital appreciation potential as well i strongly suggest you check out my cup my splt video where i talk about it with the fund not the fund manager but the the vp of etfs chris collin i'll put that video also in the video description below hopefully i remember but this is a very very stable boring etf if you look at the stock price it's very very stable it has increased uh it started at ten dollars now it's at 1038 so i think that this etf the stock price is either going to be very, 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 very flat or it's actually going to go up with time, which is phenomenal. And it's giving you 6% plus yield. If we look at the distributions, they've actually increased them to 5.2 cents. Now it's at 5.5 cents. They actually increased the distribution. Another great thing about this is most, if not all, the income you're going to get is eligible dividends. So if you're in a lower tax bracket and you're holding this fund in a cash account or non-registered, uh, it's going to be very, very tax efficient because in Canada, if you're in a low tax bracket, very low tax bracket, eligible dividends is what you want. So you're going to get quite a bit, bit of eligible dividends here. So this is the first option, first category, in my opinion, the lowest risk, a much, much, much better option, great alternative to a GIC, a cash savings account. Don't bother with those. 
They are not tax efficient. You'll get 5% with those now, but later on you'll get less. When rates get cut, you should always get about 5 6% plus yield, pretty sure, with SPLT. So for me, this is a no-brainer, the safest option. Second category is going to be a relatively new category. It's going to be cover calls on fixed income, but uh, U.S. government bonds. And I'm, I'm going to exclude the long-term government bonds here. I'm only going to do medium term and short term, which is a lot less, you have a lot less duration risk. And of course, when it comes to the medium term ones, you have two options. You have HPYM from Harvest um, and you also have MPay from Horizons. Very, very, very similar concept. They're doing covered calls on medium or intermediate term bonds, which the duration is about seven to 10. So this is going to have a lot less duration risk, a lot more stability than the long term bonds. Uh, then you know, funds like Happy T, HPYT from Harvest. It's not going to be on the list because I feel it's, you know, it's not really, it, it's, it is a very safe asset class, but you have a little bit more volatility. So I'm only including HPYM in here, not Happy T and not LPay, but only MPay from Horizons. And by the way, they also have SPay, which is even lower risk. It's even shorter, the duration. So you're looking at about 8% yield, guys, with both MPay and HPYM and about 7% yield with SPay, which is actually phenomenal. So uh, the only thing I want to point out with the Horizons ones, which you might not like, is that you buy them in Canadian dollars, but the dividend gets paid out in US dollars. So you might not find that convenient. So if you actually do the, the, the yield or calculation for MPay, you know, I've been getting questions about this. So it's 15 cents a month right now. We multiply that by 12 to get the annual dividend rate, $1.80, but if you get the yield based on the current stock price of 27.39, you'll see that the yield is only 6.57, but that's because it's being paid out in US dollars. So you actually have to multiply it by the exchange rate to actually get the real yield, which is, you know, let's say it's $1.34 now. So the yield is actually in the 8%, uh, and, uh, right? So that's really important when it comes to MPay and SPay. HPYM, you buy it in Canadian dollars and you get the dividend also in Canadian dollars. So might, that might be more convenient for you. The first distribution is $0.08 cents here. So if you divide that, multiply that by 12, you have the annual dividend, $0.96. Cents. You divide it by the current price at about eleven seventy. So, um, you know, it's about 8% yield as well, 8.2. So I expect about 8% yield, guys, with the, with the MPay, a little bit less with the SPay. Great, great, great options for an emergency fund to get really that high yield. And most of this income, some of it is going to be regular income because, it, you know, bonds gives you regular income. But the majority of it, I feel, is going to be capital gains or rock because they, they are doing covered calls on this. So that portion is going to be capital gains or rock. So tax considerations as well, something you should consider also if you're putting these in a non-registered account. Again, the higher the tax bracket you're in, the more most probably capital gains and rock will be better for you. Rock is just delayed capital gains. So I'm going to put them all in the same category, both of those in the same category, low, low tax bracket. You're probably better off with SPLT, but you're getting less yield as well. So you got to remember that as well. So that is the second category. Uh, I would say, uh, let's go to the third category. Now I'll give you my thoughts on what I like best. Third category is going to be your lower volatility put, and covered call ETFs, uh, there's four of them. So you got ZPay and ZPW from BMO, and then you have PYF and PayF from Purpose. So these are these are equities. So you know Brompton SPLT, it is equities, but you're giving up a lot of the or the the, the capital fluctuation of those equities is almost non-existent. Uh, these ones is going to be, it's fixed income. It's really U.S. bonds. And these ones is probably going to be the, the category that's a little bit more, a little bit more risky. You could expect a little bit more volatility than the other ETFs that we've seen. But still, on the, nonetheless, great to consider if you're willing to maybe get some equity exposure, because with these, it's probably you have the highest chance of actually getting higher return over time. So the two uh, less risky ones would be ZPay. And PYF, I put these in the same category. You're looking at about a yield of 6% with ZPay. 7.72 right now for PYF. But the MER on PYF here is 71 basis points. With ZPay, it's 73. So out of the two, I find that PYF is very interesting. 
But if you actually do a, a total return calculator, because these have been around for a couple of years, ZPay is actually outperforming PYF in terms of total return. So very, very similar guys, ZPay, PYF, what they do. It's really up to you if you like this category to choose which one you like. Obviously, BMO has a you know longer track record. It's, it's the bank. But I have to say that 633 yield versus 772 right now is quite a big difference and the MER very interesting on PYF is lower so that's very interesting now a little same kind of concept but a little bit higher yield and a little bit higher risk would be ZPW and pay F so here we're talking about 8.89 percent yield MER of 71.71 and here the yield is 8.98 but the MER is very high on this one not sure why 1.46 I just did a total return comparison for fun and believe it or not it's actually very close uh, ZWP the BMO one has recently overtaken pay F but not by much you could see here that pay F in blue was outperforming it for quite a while but then ZPW shot up and I'm pretty sure it's because ZPW uh, has a lot of U.S. stocks in there. But either way, guys, you could expect very similar performance between these two. I probably will have to give the edge ZPW, though, because of the, the DMER is much, much lower. So that's the third category. Do some research yourself if you feel these are interesting for you. They are very interesting uh, options. So basically, you have these four for kind of your equity exposure option you have the spay mpay and hpym for a less risky fixed income bond exposure with cover calls and then you have in my opinion the, the you know the least volatile the least risky it will be splt so if you're asking which one would be my preferred choice i personally don't even have an emergency fund or any of these for me they're way too boring but if ever you want, you know, if it makes you comfortable to put 10 grand away somewhere in a, in, a, in a fund, I think the most interesting option has to be these midterm, uh, midterm ones here because you have really nice stability and you actually have a yield of 8% plus, plus you have fairly tax efficient income. Most of it's going to be capital gains and rock. Uh, and it's U.S. government bonds, right? So which one you decide to get is, is your, your choice. Again, uh, HPYM, you buy it in Canadian, you get the dividend in Canadian. MPay, you buy it in Canadian, you get the dividend in US. And same thing for SPay. But if you want to buy it in US and get the dividend in US, you could actually get HPYM.U. They have a .U version and there's also an MPay.U and an SPay. Dot you. So in case you want to buy it in U.S., get it in U.S. dollars, the dividend, you have uh, those options as well. So some great options on the Canadian market, guys. This is where I feel these are very, very, very safe, low volatility funds. And of course, I started, remember, with the safest, in my opinion, going on to the, the more risky ones. But they're all great, great options. It's just up to you uh, to choose which one you like or you can mix and match as well. Now let's move on to the U.S. stock market. All right, everyone, on the U.S. market, I'm going to give you five options. These, I have to admit that there's a really, really great choices on the U.S. market uh, compared to the Canadian market where you could actually get, you know, a, a really safe 9, 10% yield. So let's go through it. Again, we'll start with the lowest risk options here, the really boring low risk ones. I'll give you two of them. CH, CSHI from NEO, same guys who do uh, SPY I, QQQI that, that recently just came out. So this is basically a cash alternative that basically it, it kind of looks like uh, SPAY basically. So it holds mostly short term uh, T-bills just like the name says and they write some options and cover calls I believe to increase the, the yield a little bit. So you're looking at 6%, very, very boring, very, very safe just uh, at that 6% minimum here. And I was actually going to exclude Buck from Simplify. This is Simplify's cash alternative ETF. And I was actually going to exclude it because the yield was under 6%. I think it was even under 5%. But lo and behold, they recently doubled their distribution from the regular or the normal 10 cent one to 20 cents. So I got to mention in this video, this is very exciting. However, I don't know if it's going to continue to be 20 cents a month. If it is, guys, we're talking about 9% yield on a, on a cash ETF. And they do, uh, it, it reminds me a lot of high of what they seem to be doing. But it's, you know, like the name says, and by the way, we're going to check out high in a second because that would have to be my favorite one out of all of them. But a really, really good contender now because you really have a lot of high yield, over 9% on a cash alternative ETF. Really, really interesting. I'm just curious. We'll have to keep following it and to see if that 20 cents remains the same. But of course, uh, now that this is going to be an annual video, we're going to check them out or review them every year. 
So these are going to be your two very, very safe and boring options. Keep your eye on Buck uh, very, very closely. I would say in the next couple of months could be a great option. Uh, the next category would be ETFs that do short dated put or call spreads. So this would have to be by far my favorite category. I think high is amazing in this one. It's simplified. If you look at the stock chart, you'll see an amazingly boring, steady stock chart with a fantastic yield um, of over 9% as well. Very, very consistent. Check out this video. I strongly suggest it. We've, I've, in, I've spoken with uh, not only Larry, but also Shailesh as well about high multiple times on the channel. You could check it out, but this would have to be my favorite option. It's a no-brainer. Your capital, look at the stock chart. Your, the capital almost doesn't move, which is great for an emergency fund, but you're getting 9% yield while you're wait. While you wait, very low management fee at 51 basis points. And by the way, even Buck and, and the cash one, they're, they're, they're very low. Uh, 35 here and you have 38. Um, so yeah, high would have to be definitely my favorite option. You'll see the short dated put or call spreads. You'll see that that here. You'll, you'll always see uh, right two, 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 two of them, right? One after the other. They're just doing short dated call or put spreads on very boring stuff here like uh, the S&P 500, that's S SPX. And the, in cash, you know, most of the assets are gonna be in the T-bills. Now, I do have to mention that a new ETF from SoFi just came out, which to me looks exactly like high. It looks like a high copycat to me. Um, the dividend rate's a little bit higher. It's at 10.22. This one, however, just, just came out, guys. I think the distribution was just, the first distribution was just, just declared. Yeah, right here. So it's very new. But I'm not going to go into details and look at the holdings. To me, it looks identical to high. The strategy looks identical to high. The one small advantage I see is that the, the MER is uh, two basis points less, uh, but it looks exactly the same. So this one, we definitely got to keep our eye on it. It could be a good competitor to high, um, but obviously high as the one with the most track record. So just giving you the option, THTA might also be a great option. So these are definitely my favorite category would be high and now THTA. Very, very stable. Not perfect, right? Not It's not going to be perfect. It, this, is, this is not like a, G, a CD or anything. But if you are if you ask my opinion, it, it's well worth the, the, the risk trade-off to get that 9% yield instead of 5 or whatever. Uh, it, it's a no-brainer. I mean, if you look at high, if you look at the total return since inception, it's really, really, really good. And last but not least, I'll give you a last option to do with uh, Treasury. This just came out from Define, same guys who do QQQ, uh, QQQY and JPY, which obviously you know that I love. This is also managed by Zega, so it's managed by Jay and his team. It's very new, but I have a strong suspicion this could also be a great option. I also feel that this is maybe going to be a very stable and boring fund. And why do I have a feeling that the yield is going to be much higher than 9 or 10? That's just what defines and what Jay does. So uh, you could read the investment strategy here, but basically from what I've read, it's mostly in uh, boring fixed income stuff like T-bills and they're writing options and doing these option strategies kind of like high to increase uh, the, the yield. But it's going to be pretty, pretty safe, pretty stable. But unfortunately... Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's new, so there's not much data we have. I don't know what kind of yield there could be. So keep a very, very close eye on this one. It could be a great alternative. So these are the alternative, the, the, the cash uh, savings alternatives that you can get 6% plus on the American stock market. Which one are your favorite? Which one is your favorite? Is there other ones that I've missed? And remember, don't, don't write, what about this? What about this? And it's not even 6% yield. Got to be at least 6% plus yield with lower volatility. Let me know if I missed any and I'll add them if they're, they pass my test in next year's review of these ETFs. So ho hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm going to do it again next year. Every year I'm going to give you my update on the Canadian market, the U.S. market when it comes to emergency fund or low volatility cash savings, cash parking alternatives. Please don't put them in GICs. Please don't put them in CDs, guys. Completely waste of money, not tax efficient. You could get, you could do much, much better. You could get much, much higher yield. I can't tell you how much I hate CDs and GICs. Stop giving your money to the bank. You can do much, much better. 
See you next time. Hey, don't go yet. A few reminders before you leave. Did you know that I launched a YouTube loyalty membership program where for only $3 a month, you could become a PII Inner Circle member where you will gain access to exclusive content, exclusive videos and live streams, as well as other perks and benefits, including a really cool weekly opportunity report. That's right. If you're interested, just click on the little join button next to the subscribe button to see what it's all about. Also, make sure to follow me on Blossom and download Blossom. It's a social investing app, which is really cool. You could share your portfolio, follow other people's portfolios, including my own. My username is Adrian underscore PII. So download it with the referral link below. Not only is it free, but you could actually earn cash by taking these really small, quick one minute courses. Really awesome. It's a no brainer. Also, make sure to visit our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca. That's where you could book a one-on-one -on -one private coaching session with yours truly, with myself, where you could ask me all the questions you want. All the information and booking information is on the website. Make sure to check out that video on the homepage there to see how to book a one-on-one -on -one properly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, which I'm very proud of, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package. This is a reference tool or a companion tool that will help you build your own portfolio. So it has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios, and it covers both the Canadian and US stock markets. And the good news is you'll only ever have to buy it once because it comes with free lifetime updates. And my plan is really to update the version every single year. So make sure to pick it up. Also, I have Questrade and Passive referral links below. So Questrade is the broker that I personally use and Passive is the broker companion tool or companion or assistant that I use. Really cool program, really cool software. So I have referral links for both of those. Questrade, $50 of free trades and Passive, I have half off for the elite membership. If you're interested in the elite membership, and even if you want to start out with the free membership and upgrade to the elite afterwards, use my referral code so you could still get that 50% off. And don't forget that the elite membership of Passive is 100% free if you use Questrade. For social media, we have a very successful and big Facebook group, private Facebook group with over 14,000 members where we all try to help each other out. So make sure to join that group. Information is, in, is below. We also have Instagram where you could follow us or more personal stuff uh, when it comes to our life here in Panama and there's LinkedIn as well. So as usual, everyone, how do I leave you? Continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.